Hello everyone and welcome back to another round of PK Crash Plays. This time we are back once again with Illusion of Gaia. Um, when we last left off we had collected our first mystic statue in the Incan ruins. And we had set off on a ship which then was destroyed by a large shark creature. And we lost our friend Seth, and we also lost all of our friends as we all got tossed overboard and ended up shipwrecked. Um, after spending what was essentially three weeks out at sea, um, Will and Kara grew to be closer together, only for Will to eventually collapse from scurvy. And he awoke on the outskirts of the town called Frisia where he and Kara finally set off and found Lance and Lily, only for Lance to be basically in an amnesiatic state, and our friend Eric was with them, and now he's missing. So now we are going to set off and try and find our friend before something bad happens to him. So now that everyone's all caught back up, let's just jump back into Frisia, shall we? Um, before we get going, I'm going to do a quick moment of checking on things, because I think I got some stuff kind of out of skew, so one second. Okay, welcome back. Sorry about that. So, now we go. So here we are, in this back alley. Uh, remember, these guys tasked us with trying to find a renegade slave. No one can put on a show like I can. Have a look. <laughs> so, I know it seemed kind of like I might have been dogging on this game last time. And I am kind of generally about that with when it comes to Illusion of Gaia, but it's only because I really do have a sincere fondness for this game. It's... stuff is a little hokey, and at times, you know, like, the translations are kind of funny and ridiculous. But, you know, the gameplay is solid. Um, the universe that they created for it is genuinely interesting and cool, especially because it incorporates a lot of, like, mystical places that exist in our real world. And I feel, you know, like, even though of all that stuff, this still has genuine heart to it, and I think overall that will always win out. Oh, soon we will be sent away. I tried not to think. The more I think, the more empty I become. I don't believe in spirits. If there were spirits, things like statues, status wouldn't matter. So this guy is basically blocking our way right here. <clears throat> Children don't come here. Go home. So basically, that's their way of being like, Meh, you can't get past me if you're a kid. And that's just to kind of show you that there's a guy up there on that roof. So, instead of falling to the left this time, we're going to go over here and fall to the right. And now that guy can't do boo about us because we're already past him. So, na na da boo boo. Soon a great power will come from above. Then mankind will die out. I don't know who made the prediction, but it's all a lie. I do this to forget. 
So you sit there with your arms crossed, kind of sulking to forget. That's weird. These laborers are the same age as you. Remember, there are people everywhere who live this way. When I think of myself in your position, I shudder. I have no time to worry about what people think. It's hard enough just taking care of myself. Hey boy, kids can't come here. Go home. Go home. Or did you come to get a laborer? Yes. I like your courage. I don't know what you do, you do here, but have a look around. I am Imus. I was brought here by boat from far off Asia. We are a hunting tribe. When we're hungry, we hunt for food. All the animals here have fallen victim to an unknown disease. I am Remus. Our game disappeared and we had nothing to eat. We had no choice but to become laborers. We didn't know where we would be taken or what would happen. I am Sam. We were rescued last night by a man named Eric who was working at the hotel, but we were caught by the labor traders. He's being held in a house on the corner of a back street in town. Please save him. Ooh. So we just learned the whereabouts of Eric. <clears throat> Apparently the uh, slave traders are not too happy with him setting all the slaves free. So we are going to go save him because screw these slave traders. A man working at the hotel was caught by a labor trader. Ooh. Oh shoot, sorry. One second more, I gotta check this thing, it's starting to fall apart, sorry. One second. Sorry, darn it all. My cable's not as strong on this uh, thing as I'd like, and so it keeps on kind of like fiddling. And I don't know if you guys can hear it on your end, but it's crackling on mine, so I didn't want to like sit there and make you guys suffer through that. <clears throat> There's nothing he could do about being found. He's a laborer who ran away yesterday. I should tell the labor traders. I was prepared for the worst when I did it. Please don't tell. I don't care about myself, I just don't want to get him in trouble. So, this right here is kind of one of those, like, moments where I feel like the game kind of fails you a bit. Because... <clears throat> one of the red jewels that you have to collect is from the, the labor traders. And if you don't give that guy up, you don't get that jewel. So, it's kind of like... You know, darned if you do, darned if you don't. It's not like a torto it's not like a tornado came through here. Maybe you'd be more comfortable in a place not so not quite so neat. Oh, I thought they'd tossed his place. So here's a secret. Here's a little path that you can jump down here. Basically talk to this dude. Ha ha ha. You understand this place. Sometimes what you think is unimportant is the most important thing. Life is like that. This is a gift, please take it. The old man secretly put something in Will's bags. And that thing is... A red jewel. So, that's how you get one of the secret ones here. Just wearing me way back out here. And I'm unfortunately going to have to give up that guy, like I said, so I can get the uh, red jewel. I hate doing it, because it's always the worst part, but... Where'd he go? A laborer escaped. Have you seen him? Tell me where and I'll... give you this red jewel. Well, tells us where the laborer is hiding. Thank you, here's a present. Please accept it. So if you laugh and lie, he catches on, and then you basically miss your opportunity. So I hate doing it, like I said, but the game gives you literally no option to basically be like, no, oh, screw you. 
so that's awful. If you don't want to lose your lives, go home. Is a man called Eric there? I've never heard such of such a name. Why do you ask? Will? Is that Will's voice? Save me! Ouch! Shh, hey boy, be quiet. I'll break down the door. Oh. Just that easy. Ooh. Impossible! You've come to rescue me! I didn't think you could break down the door. The man ran away scared. I tried to sneak into the camp to rescue three laborer brothers. I was discovered and now I'm like this. The laborers were forced to work in the diamond mine. I'll tell you where. Please save them. Will learns the location of the mine. And now we have our main purpose here. Um, this is not a dungeon that gets a mystic statue, but this is basically a um, place where you can kind of level up characters like Freedan and Will and also get them prepared for the next big dungeon. Um, we're going to go in here because I'm going to go see Jim the Jeweler. Make sure I'm still checking items and stuff to make sure I didn't miss a red jewel. Because I'm doing this all by memory and my memory is not 100%. I'm holding 12 of the red jewels for you. You collected over five jewels. According to the list, your defense power will be raised. Your defense power is raised by one. You collected over eight jewels. According to the list, your life power will be raised. Your strength is raised by one. And we collected over twelve. According to this, your strength will be raised. My attack power is raised by one. Cool. See his inventory. So we've collected up to twelve so far. The next big one is the twenty mark, and that's where we get the psycho power. That's basically one of Will's abilities. It kind of enhances one of his abilities. I can't remember if it's um, the one we have right now or if it's one of the ones we get next. But uh, it basically gives it more damage. I think dark power, same thing with that one. It's something that Freedan will learn coming up here, and it's something that enhances that power. And then the My Secrets is our ultimate goal, where we go to the secret boss. Oh. I was startled. Someone dropped from the ceiling. Thanks for showing me that impressive dive. I will give you something. Slap. Kids. If you do something this dangerous again, you'll be in big trouble. So I just got vigorously manhandled by someone for jumping off their roof. Oh well. We're going to leave all of our friends behind because we're going to go to the diamond mine and we're going to save the rest of those uh, poor slaves. I guess this is Will's way of kind of making up for the fact that he just sold one of them out. <sighs> okay. diamond mine was as quiet as a tomb. A chill ran down Will's spine when he heard the screams from the back of the cave. So we got these lizard guys who basically have whips and shields, their characters. And uh, they have these little worm creatures. And the game's way of telling you where they are is this little skull-like rock in the front of them. So whenever you see that in the dirt, that's where you can basically tell you're going to run into one of those worms. Works every time. See, we see one right here, so there it is. So predictable, worm. Another one. There we go. <clears throat> Another HP up. There we go. We are steadily collecting orbs. So, now we're kind of in the bash a lot of things area and not a lot of talking. Um, but we will do this. There we go. There are eight laborers, including me, forced to work in the mine. Please save us. That's one down, seven to go. So we got to keep that in mind. We got seven more slave trader or er, slaves to free, basically. Ooh. Those eyeball guys, those things are nasty creatures. They fire this beam and I think they can even like do like a good chunk of your health and damage. And unfortunately, I'm stuck as well right now, so the range is kind of limited. Oh, sorry. 
still getting reused to the control schematics because it's been almost a week since we last played this. Oh. And of course, killing the worm freed that cage. So, live and learn. Let's see, we have another slave right here. Get this guy free. Um, excuse you. Down you go. Gonna free this dude. Thank you for saving me. As a reward, I'll tell you something. This mine is a secret room. Its entrance blends into the wall. But you can find it by watching for wind blowing through the cracks in the wall. Of course, it would blare, blow fly, fine hair like yours around. Then you'll understand. So, one of the big mechanics in this game, and I will give them credit for this too, is the idea that, you know, paying attention to his character sprite actually goes a long way towards, um, like, uh, unveiling secrets. Uh, one of the big ones, of course, is that the wind will always blow his hair in certain areas. Now we got a worm. Oh, we got some health back, thank goodness, because I'm doing terribly right now. And so, one thing is that if you ever feel like you know, you're kind of coming to a dead end or something and you feel like something else should be happening, but it isn't, then always check his hair. Because you never know when you might have just accidentally, you know, caught on to the fact that you're supposed to be in a secret area. I can't remember if I'm supposed to fall down there for something or not. Oh, nope. That's the last boss. Or last enemy in this area. Cool! Now I got more sword strength. So now I'm gonna go down. Okay. So with that, we got ourselves three lives. Pretty solid so far. I hope everyone is enjoying this game. Like I said, I know I've been seeming like I've been crapping on it a lot, but it's a, it's a really good game. And, you know, credits to Enix and Quintet back in the day for making something like it. Oh, cool. That opened up my, uh, my dark space. Oh, I can change into free, Dan. Looks like you're hurt. Close your eyes. So we're going to hold off on being free, Dan, for a second, because I believe there's something I have to unlock here. So this is where I believe you got to try and keep an eye on his hair. See? My hair and my tunic are blowing right now, which means there's something secret here, which means if I saw it up and do my psycho dash, there's a secret slave that was buried in, in, in the cave-in. What would happen if we took longer? We want to give you a present. I'm sending three red jewels to the jeweler. So another good reason, obviously, beyond just being a good person to free all these captives, is that you uh, get yourself three red jewels right there, which you would have totally missed if you hadn't caught that dude. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and change to Freedan. And we're going to leave. Now we're going downstairs even further into the mines. <clears throat> yeah, these guys are going to become a joke real quick because not only do I have, you know, like all the strength things so far, but I've also got, um, you know, the strength things from the uh, Gem the Jeweler, so I'm even more powerful than normal at this point. So. We're going to go up here. Can't get anywhere up there, so we're going to go down this. Run down this ramp and go up this one. Yeah, no worm can be a match for free down the Dark Knight. <clears throat> the 
is also why we come down here because that skull right there basically is like, oh yeah, there's a secret worm, I think, down here. Oh no. Why did I think that there was a worm down there? Hmm. Well, anyway, I gotta kill something in order to do that, and I can't reach it from here. Oh, that's the that's the worm that's connected to that skull. So, I have to go down here because we need a new ability for Free Dan that allows him to hit longer range targets. Start by punking these guys in the face with my sword. Um, don't you turn to stone? Cheater. Yeah, and nice try. Oh. oh, that's right, you can't block their beams, I forgot. I thought I was gonna be cool there. Um, quit turning the stone. Jerk face. There we go. Extra hit point block. So, as you can tell, like the dots go up by halves. So, getting one like heart stone basically gives me a half a dot. So, two of them is what makes that whole thing work basically. I think I have to turn back to Will real quick because I have to do another psycho dash and break the door down. There we go. So we psycho dash. Boom. And as you see in here, we suddenly have a free dance statue, but it's a different free dance statue. So we're going to talk to Gaia real quick because they're going to tell us about it. Free dance power, the Dark Friar, can defeat enemies in places a sword can't reach. When you defeated all the enemies, the road will open up. That's basically his way of being like, hey, remember that worm earlier? This is how you kill it. Dark Friar can now be used. The Dark Friar is a dark power that only the Dark Knight, wow, they say dark more times there, Freedan can use. Use the aura power to scorch a distant enemy. Use the attack button to save energy. And of course we gotta test it out, so we're gonna take a swing. He's gonna glow red, and then at the end of it, shoots off a dark star. Pretty cool if you ask me, I mean, not that you have a swordsman in this game, but you have a swordsman who can attack long range using spells with his blade. I think that's pretty awesome. And there's genuinely a lot of promise. Like I said, I think one of the things that is the biggest misgiving on this is that there's a lot of potential squandered. You know, like, Freedan's a great character. Uh, Shadow later on is a great character. Will is a great character. They all play very intricately and differently and in fun different, you know, fun ways. But it's that idea that, like, they really could have done so much more. Like, you know, they could have had a, oh, I don't know, like a, like a bow guy or someone who's, like, you know, like super telekinetic who can like attack long range with telekinesis or something. But instead they kind of drop the ball a little bit. So, freed him. There are people who are forced to work deep in the diamond mine. Please use this key to save them. You've got the elevator key. So I can't remember, I think that's four. See, so the first two, the third one I found in the secret wall. That was the fourth one right there. Yeah, so we have four more still to save. Which means we are only halfway there. Fortunately, we have freed in for this leg of the game, so we're gonna go for it. Back 
all this way. Oh, and by the way, that crevice where that guy came out of, it looks like a secret door or something. It doesn't go anywhere. So I know that a lot of people are probably like, oh, dude, you should check that out, but don't worry. I have in the past, and it doesn't do anything. Uh, but this is where we're supposed to be. Elevator entrance. Use that door to get to the elevator. So, we need to just equip the elevator key now. Key turns, making a strange sound. Unfortunately, we'll never hear that sound. Well, this elevator makes weird sounds. But as you can see, uh, when we were on the ground floor up there, you saw like these these ropes and stuff crossing paths and like the elevator platforms on them. Yeah, now that's where that kind of comes into play. It was kind of cool when I was a kid, like, oh yeah, I can see that stuff before I actually get to that stuff. Anyway, there's two places open, and then they have two halves of a key. There are two keyholes, so you have to get two keys in order to open up that one. Oh, and this is the morgue. Got a lot of worms to bust down here, basically. We're gonna go around the outskirts first, and we're gonna take these worms out. And we're gonna kind of circle in a little bit. There we go, and we got them all. I think I check the skeletons in here to make sure that they don't have the keys. Sorry, I know it seems weird that I'm like slashing my sword at these guys, but it's all to just make sure that I didn't miss the key there. And I don't think I did, so maybe it's all down here. Oh. One of the victims is down here. Oh, and these guys died in one hit now, which is awesome. Because I have to deal with their stupid, crummy stone ability. By the way, how does everyone like Fabio Knight? I always thought Freedan was the friggin' coolest, of course, because he had a sword. You know, whereas Will just has his puny little flute, but... You know, like, now that I'm seeing him... You know, like, he definitely does just look like Fabio with shoulder pads. Thank you. I won't forget what you've done. Take this key. Unfortunately, I think I must have missed something, because I think that he's supposed to tell me, or someone's supposed to tell me, that there's a place in the morgue where you look, and you find the key. By the way, sorry, I just had to do that, because it's one of my favorite things when I was a kid. Um, if you do the, um the attack button, and you hold it, and you move in different directions, there we go. I just saw it sparkle on the ground right there. Uh, he will do his sword slash basically out in all directions, so if you ever find yourself being like kind of overwhelmed, that's kind of a good way to break him all up. You know, it doesn't do like a full complete slash, it lets you charge up your blade and do things like that. So, it's kind of a bonus. So with that, we have both our keys, let's get them equipped. We've reached the ultimate depths where everyone is locked up. Oh, it's our buddies from the slave trade. Thank you. Our home village is far across the ocean. If you could go there, help the villagers to regain their strength. 
Thank you. All living things in our home country have grown strange. People have turned to stone. Some are sick with unknown diseases. Thank you. I heard from Eric that your friend has lost his memory. Legend says that there is a song that brings back the past. Please let him hear it. Sam hums, hums a strange melody. You've learned the memory melody. I need a favor. May I have the prison key and the melody of the wind as a souvenir of our meeting? I'm sure I'll never use it again. Okay. Dude just, like, took the prison key to Edward Castle and an unknown song which I already knew and didn't, you know, like, can't unlearn. But, sure. Dude just basically got that. So, we got all eight of our slave friends freed. <clears throat> meaning we have officially busted up the labor union in Frisia. So hopefully maybe that will cause the um, slave traders to look elsewhere for their work. Instead of trying to put poor innocent people into slavery. Or maybe I'll have to bust their faces in a little bit before that comes to pass, who knows. The point is, I did a good. Freedan, you did a good, bud. So, I of course just left to the main map as Freedan, but as you'll notice, Will can't be Freedan outside of dungeons. He just turns back regardless. So, we're back to Will. Back to Frisia, though. So we freed our friends, we got ourselves more crystals, or more gems, which I ended up already putting in. And we learned our new melody, which is hopefully going to let Lance have his memory back. They say I don't know who I am. Kind of strange. If I don't know who I am, how did I get here? Okay. Just because you lost your brain doesn't mean you have to be philosophical about it. Will began playing the melody he remembered. What is this place? Somehow I feel a little homesick. I feel like I'm back in the womb. Everything that's happened and the people I've met are pouring into my head. I was raised in the town of South Cape. When my father didn't come back from an expedition, the most important thing in my life was gone. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't stand my father using soldiers to invade other countries. It's awful when someone loses their life. What had taken years to put together was destroyed in one moment. I wonder if Seth is alright. People live on because they forget about un unpleasant things. Well, everyone else just seriously had like a transcendent moment. And Lance is back. What? What have I been doing? What's happened to everyone? Lance, your memory is back. I was worried. I wondered what would happen. I guess everyone was worried. I'd take care of someone in the same situation. Well, there's an eccentric inventor in the woods nearby. Shall we go? I think his name is Neil. Did you say Neil? That's the same name as, name as my lost cousin. My cousin Neil, the inventor, flew in the sky in a thing called an airplane. 
So Will and his group went to the inventor's house. Neil's Cottage. It's open. Come in. Neil, it's me, Will from South Cape. Oh, Will, you've gotten strong. Are all these people your friends? This person stinks. What are you saying? You shouldn't talk like that. There's a wonderful smell in this room, isn't there? Hey, hey, both of you talk pretty harshly. When you're wrapped up in inventing something, you don't care about your appearance. I don't think the smell is that bad. Not enough to hate me for it. I've only been wearing these socks for a month. I've only had mine on for three weeks, I guess I lose. <clears throat> I can't believe it. I don't want to breathe the same air as him. I've heard enough about my socks. Make yourself at home. You're Will's friends. You're welcome. Seth will be pleased when he sees this invention. No, oh, she's just gonna say the same stuff. And I can't reach Lily, so I can't ask her what she thinks, so... Oh. That's a camera. It will burn a copy of a scene onto printing paper. The problem is that it takes almost 30 minutes. Scenery doesn't move, but to photograph a person means they can't move for 30 minutes. When I used it, the eyes turned bright red like a rabbit's. You can kind of check out his inventions, basically. That's what I'm doing right here. That's a telescope. You can see stars as if they were in your hand. Those are airplane wings. It's part of a machine that will fulfill man's dream of flying in the air like a bird. The body's too big and you need a runway to take off so it's hidden in the desert. That's an oxygen tank. There's air inside. With this you can breathe underwater, but there's only one minute's worth of air inside. Compressing the air would let you stay underwater longer, but I don't know how to do it. So he's basically an inventor of like all the big modern inventions you know, of our world. The photograph, the telescope, the oxygen tank, the airplane, but he's not 100% there with his flying, so it's kind of like a, you know, half-hearted deal. Tell me why you came to see me. Will tells Neil about hearing his father's voice and visiting the world's ruins in his search to find the mystic statues. <laughs> interesting. I too have some interest in ruins. The ruins Will talked about are scattered over the world, but they have something in common. Drawing a line among the ruins makes a shape that looks like the constellation of Cygnus. Cygnus? That's the Tower of Babel, where Will's father got lost. It's in the middle of the ground painting of the big white bird. There's a new red star below the constellation of Cygnus. That's right, you know a lot. The red star in Cygnus, Will's interest in the ruins. Different elements are bound together organically. I don't know if it's by coincidence or by design, but something is going to happen. Fortunately, the Nazca ground paintings are a week's walk east of here. Go? So, we're going to go to what is essentially in a real-life monument once again, the Nazca Plains. Where all the big drawings that you can see from space are. We're going to... We don't want Will to be the only one having a good time. The group went to the Nazca Desert. Quite the group we've got here now. It was a long way, but you did a good job. 
This is the most famous of the ground paintings, the condor. Have you ever heard of it? No one knows why ancient people drew pictures like this. Whenever I come here, I'm overwhelmed by the grand scale. You should go see it for yourself. And so you can indeed come out here and look at the paintings. Got the strips and the wings all the way down here. Got the legs and the tail feathers. Another leg and a knee. More wings. And now we're going to talk to everyone since. Don't be in such a hurry. Wait for everyone else. It's scary. I'll stay with Neil. When you look at it this way, it's like the White Lion's in an athletic event. Maybe the ancient Nazca people ran the 100 yard dash here. Something tells me no. Okay. Up until now, all I've done is go to school, study, and play. Sometimes I wonder if my being here isn't all a dream. Doesn't there seem to be a pattern in the way the rocks are scattered around? Much like the stars in the sky, I'd figure. This is the condor's stomach. If you dig here, you might find eggs. It's a joke. Haha. <laughs> Don't be so serious. Well then. I make sure no one's saying anything different. I explore more. See if there's anything I missed while I was out here. Ooh. One of those ghost guys. Coo coo coo. Oh great, he just straight up vanished on me. Okay. We're gonna play that game, huh, ghost? Well, two can play it. I'm gonna run faster than you, you jerk. Okay, everyone's back, so time to get myself situated. We'll talk about when everyone comes back. The mystic statue that Will spoke of is somewhere on this plane. I thought I'd seen the paintings before, but doesn't this condor look like Cygnus? Of course, I hadn't noticed. When we look at it, we see Cygnus, but ancient people probably just saw a condor. Ah! I've got it! Look! Look where the rocks are on the ground. They're positioned like the stars in the constellation of Cygnus. Of course. Cygnus has nine stars and there are nine stones. Where is the red star that appeared recently? I think it's in the left foot. At the joint of its left foot. Let's check the left foot. A riddle and a constellation, kind of romantic. We're working on a puzzle that explorers and archaeologists have never solved. Not bad, it's as exciting as inventing something. It's going to happen, it's exciting. What an exciting experience. Gee, let's all just say exciting over and over again. There's a tile buried in the sand. When Will's flute touched it, there was a rumbling sound. Hey, something huge is coming down. There's a strange garden floating in the sky over Nazca. On the ground, Neil and my friends look like tiny ants going back and forth. 
Could the paintings be an airport for the Sky Garden? Well, everyone, welcome to dungeon number two, the Sky Garden of Nazca Plains. We meet again, Cuckoo Coo. You're a strong boy to have come this far. So apparently the Moon Tribe are also here, in Nazca. This Sky Garden is our mode of transportation. There are four crystal balls in four locations. Find each one in clockwise order. Drop off the cliff at the front and back to and and back to find the upside down world. So this is genuinely why I think that this one is like an awesome location because the game map plays in two ways here, in that you can play the upside and the upside down. And currently, right now, we're on the upside, but as we notice when we go into this area. There's these weird platforms that kind of go in between that look like they should be a bridge, but they actually have no way to access them. So those are bridges on the upside down world, which we will get to see once we get past all these little goobers. The exploding worm balls. Oh, and the transformer robots sit there and shoot lasers out of their eyeballs. Okay. More of these dudes. There we go. Boing, boing. Take this worm dude. smacking them into each other now. He found a red jewel. Nice. Another one to send off to Jim the jeweler. Haha. -ha. Take that. You couldn't hit me with your fists of fury. So, we've reached ourselves basically a cliffside face, and with a bit of courage, we jump off, and we flip. And now we're on the upside down part of this, this uh, garden. And this is what I think is so unique about this, because the enemies also change their tactics on this side. So the robots are no longer just like um, the blue guys, but they are now red dudes who not only shoot their fists out, but retract them so that they can keep them. The worms are now, uh, like, slightly different gray, and when, um, they basically end up dying, instead of just turning into, like, these explosions that kind of go out in the carpet area, these things actually hound you for a little bit, and you can actually get hurt by their falling explosions. So you gotta be careful with these guys when you kill them. get away from as quick as possible. Yikes. More explosions. Gotta try and clear this area. There's three of them left, so we can do it. Get this guy out of the way. No! So there's obviously things I need to kill here before I go back, so we're going to do that. Just to make sure that we get ourselves a nice little bonus here. And of course this thing... Oh, I like how you can see the skull and the explosion there, too. So you can flip to the right side up again, on this side. We have two enemies here, one which is right here. And even though this is technically an enemy, it doesn't count because it is basically like a guardian. And it's guarding this treasure chest, so once it's dead, it's just done. We 
telekinesis that statue out of the way. And... You found the crystal ball. So having four of these basically opens up the path to the boss um, in this game. So... We need to get all these that we can. And there's only one per area, so we found the one for this one. So we're gonna go over this way, and we're gonna drop down here. This is gonna get us our last bad guy. And... An herb. Which will be useful going up again to the boss fight later. There we go. Finally got some health back. I was looking kinda shaky there for a second. So I genuinely loved this kind of thing because, you know, like I said, you never stop and think about the, you know, the connotations of like, hey, here's an upside down world, and um, here's your effect that you can have on it, you know, like, oh, we didn't just make like a big old maze on the top side, like, you can literally get underneath all this and also do things underneath. And it just, it was a really cool perspective shift, and, you know, Especially back in this time, you know, like, no one really ever tried this in a game before, I don't feel, so... It was really cool to just have that, like, mechanic to just switch between, you know, the upside down and the downside up. So I could put the crystal balls in. But I got plenty of room right now, and I got a lot of herbs, so we're gonna just keep going clockwise, as they said. We keep on burning our way through all this. Yeah. Big old transformers. We'll see who's laughing when I get over there. I'm gonna sidle off this side. Yoink. Uh, there's too big a gap between your arms, and so I was missed entirely by your garbage. So we're gonna hit this thing. There we go. Now we're going to oh, get this thing out of the way. Because we need to use this ramp. Tally ho! Wee! That was also kind of cool, just this idea of like, hey, jump in this entire gap that literally you could fall down and basically end up, you know, like, splatting on the ground because of... I don't know, it was just really kind of unique. The game gave you this opportunity. Yeah, that's right. No more garbage. Get out of the way. Nice. Can I change to Free Dan? I can! Awesome. Yeah, we are definitely changing to Free Dan. Nice. Right, so we've got everything recorded. Gonna keep going forward. Set up now the upside down. So cool. Now I need to get back out of here because these things are gonna rain down on me. Same with these. The dark friar. I'm just weak enough that I had to do three of these in order to kill him. There we go, we got a big old gym. Now we're gonna jump back to the other side. More enemies need to be slain. There we go. Charging up. Blast. There we go. 
got my strength boosted. And now I'm gonna jump. And as you can see, those platforms that are like little bridges up there on the top part that you can't access are now bridges you can access here. Looks kinda cool. Oh gosh, I run. So many bombs. As you can see, I can kind of spam slash these guys if I do that. It just takes a little bit of skill not to get stabbed yourself while you're doing it, so we're not going to do that all the time. So I will get healed here. I'll try and not get caught by these things because I'm trying to get up here. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Come on. There we go. And this is where the second crystal ball is. Way. Gonna keep on moseying out of here now that I got everything. Okay, jumping to the other side. Gonna jump back. Got a ways to go to get back. But yeah, like, I will give this much. You know, like, this is a unique area, you know, like a, like a sky platform that you basically go to the underside of in order to continue solving puzzles for, like, no other game really did something like this. A lot of the things were staged basically to take advantage of all types of environments, like, yeah, like, um, Zelda might have, like, a floating sky castle or something, but, like, a lot of the things were like, you know, the fire temple, or the water temple, or the earth temple, that kind of thing, and... You know, having something as fresh and unique as like, hey, Ink and Ruins, or... The Nazca Plain, you know, Sky Box, Sky Garden, whatever. You know, like, it's... It's genuinely refreshing. And doesn't feel like, you know, just something tacked on for the sake of nostalgia, or, you know, like... Adherence to a code. And I feel like a lot of games, especially nowadays, are just missing avenues like that where they can, you know, like open things up and really let people, you know, flex their creative muscle. You know, like, not everything has to have, like, the same eight kind of dungeons in a certain sequence. You know, like, why not have the final battle be kind of like a weird, like, fairy princess garden? Whereas, you know, like, maybe the first areas are real rough and tumble, like, monster's den. You know, just things like that that people don't really stop and think about in terms of, like, design. That make you really wish that people would push the boat out with it nowadays. You know? So, in case you can't notice, um, these platforms are kind of appearing and disappearing. Well, they do two things. For one thing, um, hitting these things makes that thing happen. And as you're noticing, it like kind of disappears when it's not here, and then it just reappears when I do that. It's because when you come back up here, there used to be a gate in the way up there. But suddenly, there's not. Ta-da! know that I'm amazing. No need to clap. Thank you. Thank you all. There we go. And get rid of this dude. Oh, and that's all that there is on this top side. Got the defense increase. Booyah. So, there's the gate. I need to pull that down on the other side. Oh, there we go. And the way that we do this is we basically do the Dark Friar on that switch. I thought. There we go. And in doing so, it created that thing, which means it collapsed it up here. Which means I can get in there now and check it out. 
Oops, I think I get a power up here. Oh no, I just become Will again. Poop. Sure, return to young Will. I can't remember why, but I think there's some reason to do it here. Outside of obviously just making these battles harder, because I'm not hitting as hard now with my flute. South. Oh, I think I remember why. So there's a uh, certain pair of statues, these ones. You can't break them unless you do the Psycho Dash. So I do this. And then I can suddenly get up this thing. The only problem is I can't do it to the other side because there's that weird little platform thing in the way. Um, just over here. So we're going to head over as Will. See if that thing is there. Of course, that thing is there. Hopefully, this thing actually opens up some avenues. Good deal. How oh, great to set those guys free, too. Right, right into me. Thank you. Just what I needed. Lots of self loathing and destruction. Step on this tile, it makes a sound. Oh, that's because I gotta move this statue over there. But first, I gotta clear out this thing because if I want to get that bonus, I need to kill all these dudes. There we go. Got a strength boost, yeah! Since there was no place for that hand to go back to it, just basically went, well, screw you, and started flying off. So, we're going to telekinesis this statue over here because we're going to get behind this tile right here. And there you go. He lowered the bar up there, so now we have ourselves a free shot to get into the other side of the map. Of course, everything is kind of the same way this way. No, oh, darn it. There we go. Okay. Gotta destroy these things again because they came back for some weird reason. Oh gosh, I'm almost dead. I just realized that. Not a good time. There we go. And now is our crystal ball again. There we go. Change back to free Dan. Getting all our health back too. Cool. So now we won't hopefully die going into the next area. Then make sure I'm pretty sure I got them on both sides, but. I don't want to leave an area and not get everything, so, good. <clears throat> Enemies were destroyed here. That's all I needed to know. Okay, so now that's three down, one to go. here and try and run, you realize that you get stopped pretty quickly. This is kind of a gauntlet. You have to try and weasel your way to the right spots in order to keep on dashing. And the game does not want to do that to you, like, and basically let you get away with it first off, so you gotta try and trial and error it a little bit. 
Cool. Kill that dude. Kill this guy. And we're not gonna jump just yet because I want to try and check things on the underside. So this, you cannot move from this spot basically. You can't jump over this thing. It's a guardrail of sorts. You have to get in from the other place in order to get up here. So there's a trick here, and the trick is you want to go fast, you want to hit this ramp, but you don't want to go too far because you want to stop here where you can jump to the underside. these jerks. No! Of course, just like pepper this whole area with them, so now you're getting like smacked on all sides. There. Got a telekinesis you over this way. Boom. There we go. Yeah, on my way, statuary. Um, excuse you too, Mr. Optimus Prime. Keep on going. Don't want to miss out on anything. So I think they pretty much only came down here so that you would have to come and kill those things and nothing else. Could jump back down there, but I think I'm going to keep on going this direction because... There's this thing up here, which I need to kill real quick. Oh crap. Things in the hallway are kind of hard to see because the way that the... The effect on them is blinking, it can sometimes like make them kind of invisible in frames. So it's one of those like, well I guess I'll just die moments. A defense boost and hopefully I don't get hit because I'm down to one hit point again. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, okay. Whew. Barely made it out of that alive. Okay, I think I need to switch back to Will once again because there's a place I have to psycho dash, so. that. <sighs> I am doing really terribly on here. Like, I hope you guys know, like, when I'm playing with the controller, I feel like 9 out of 10 times I really don't get hit like that. But for some reason, because I'm doing this all on keyboard, I'm just, you know, taking hits left and right from things and I'm not even able to keep up with it half the time. So you're all free to believe what you want. I clearly am not the best player in the world, so there's that truth. Crap. I really hate those snake things, though. They're a pain in the butt. So I missed out on doing this, so I think we're gonna do this here. Okay, keep on hitting the select button instead of the start button. Four enemies. There we go. Got rid of that thing. Get that out of the way. So there's two treasure chests. I think one of them has a red jewel, the other one has the crystal ball, so I need to get to those ones. And I can't get to them through here because I forgot. This is not a jumping point. Shoot. Okay, so we're going to go back this way. Oh, 
here we go. Jumping point. We. Okay. So basically, I have two places I can jump. Jumping top one takes me to a treasure chest. The jumping to the bottom takes a treasure chest. But you can't take them both in the same round, so you gotta choose which ones you wanna do. So, I'm gonna do the top one first, because it's not guarded by a treasure. I'm gonna kill this guy and get my last gem of the area. Ooh, which is the HP one. Cool. So, come here. We make our move. And Geronimo! Oh, it's an herb. For some reason I was thinking it was a red jewel. Oh well. Herbs are good too. Like I said, with me getting my butt kicked like I am, it's probably a good thing that I'm collecting a bunch of those. Bosses later on are going to get real nasty for me, so having an ability to heal is going to be a good thing. Okay, I gotta get rid of this thing, I gotta get rid of that thing, there we go. Alright, we're going to pull you all the way over here, I'm going to get my crystal ball. all four, which means we can experience the boss. First, before we do that, I'm going to go back to being free, Dan, because I am not facing the final boss as William here. Because Will is a weenie, and we do not want to fight the boss as a weenie. I remember how to get back to the bar. Oh, there we go. I forgot. Crap. Crap. I hate those things. I'm trapped in the worst possible spot, too. Okay, so now I'm here. Then piddle around for a second. Switch back to Free Dan. And we're gonna save and we're gonna make our way back. Let's roll. Okay, so that thing's gonna bounce past. And I'm going to do my secret technique. stand here in this corner and it is going to miraculously dodge me and run past. Now I'm going to basically get hit by this dumb thing because I don't have a choice. Oh, never mind. Didn't have a choice with that one. There we go. So, anyway, going back to the front. So we just jump off of this thing. We, we, back to the beginning. Cool. Looks like we got everything, so now I'm going to inventory. Crystal ball set in the hole. Crystal ball set in the hole. So, now that we've created the path, time to save, heal, and get prepared to fight, well, an exciting boss battle. Here we go, guys. The tiles are falling behind me, and now I'm on a floating platform that is now falling. Okay, so this thing right here, he can be kind of nasty if you don't know how to deal with him. Luckily, I have a good strength modifier, and I'm able to get a good few hits off, but I'm going to need to heal. I have plenty of these, thank goodness. And there we go. Didn't even need to do that. Got a mystic statue. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to skip that. The game kind of did that when I pressed any button. So now that he's defeated, I can change back to Will. But now my problem is I'm no longer in the Sky Palace. I'm now falling to the ground. A strange noise fills the air around you. From out of nowhere, you hear Neil's voice. Will, you're falling to the ground. Grab the airplane and we'll fly out of here. Oop. So this is where you have to take your, your opportunity and jump because you have to try and catch his airplane in midair. Shoot, I dropped a contact. You what? Idiot! Will is doomed for sure now. Neil, it's still a little ways to the ground. Try again. Okay, I'll get him this time. There. Phew. Almost died. Everyone's flying on the plane here. That was a close one. <laughs> Everyone's crying because they almost thought he was going to die. Don't cry. Will's been saved. Neil, you were great. This invention saved Will's life. Haha, <laughs> don't flatter me. We should try and locate the next ruins. I expect the shape of Cygnus is the same as the shape of Mew. Well, to the ocean. Mew lies somewhere in this ocean. Whoa. The plane exploded. We got out of the airplane in the nick of time. Neil's a good inventor, but it seems there's always something missing in his inventions. I guess nobody's perfect, including Neil. <laughs> That's kind of some biting witticism there, Will. The next thing he knew, Will was standing in a huge palace. I couldn't remember anything since my water landing. Is everyone safe? So, welcome to the Ocean Palace. Where enemies are walking around, but they basically don't die. They just become this weird, invisible, like, blinking thing. So we gotta try and figure out what happened to our friends here, because this is kind of dicey. Ooh, a sign of life in the next room. Kara, but she's also invisible. Will? Where? Where is it? She can't see me. Apparently everyone here is basically turned into ghosts. And as ghosts, they cannot see us in our realm. They see each other in their own realm. So, she's basically lost in a void of nothingness at the moment. Or I can hear a soft voice from somewhere. This is the palace of vampires. The fountain in this palace produces demons continuously. Yeah, speaking of demons, smack that guy. And this guy too. Makes you all think you're special, huh? What? A sign of light from the left hand room. What is this place? Dark and lonely. Mother, save me. So basically everyone's kind of scared out of their gourds because they're trapped in darkness, basically in another dimension. And meanwhile, I'm in this dimension collecting red jewels, which I'm now sending off to the jeweler, and I also have officially gotten 20, which means I've unlocked my psycho power. But we will have to do that later because there's no Jim the Jeweler anywhere nearby. What? I can hear a soft voice from somewhere. In the basement of the castle there's a strange fountain. The stone is there. Hurry. Hurry. So let's just talk about a fountain and stones. Whoa. Wah. Hey. You scared me. I practically had a heart attack. 
I saw Eric in the other room, but something strange. His body is half transparent. I can see through it. He seems to be unconscious, as if his spirit is lost. Let's stick together. We don't know what will happen. I'll borrow Will's pocket for a while. Well, let's go. So now we have a hitchhiker, basically. Um, I think this is the direction I'm supposed to go, so I'm going to go back up. So I'm going to go to the place I don't want to go just yet. Which is down here. There we go. Because up here... Oh. Nobody's here yet. There's somebody that's up there, I think, in a little while. So, anyway. Back this way. Gonna check it out. I can hear a soft voice from somewhere. The purification stone in the castle. Oh, that actually goes where I want to go. I don't want to go there just yet. So, all the way back this direction. Oh, never mind. I do want to go there. I thought there was something there. Darn it. Ooh. An actual demon I can beat up. Ooh, the coffins. So there's three coffins here. One of them's open. Hmm. I can't seem to open the lid. Lily speaks from his pocket. Wait a minute. Isn't there a hole in the coffin? I could get in through the hole. I better have a look. Strange, there's a key fastened inside this coffin. No wonder it didn't open. She's gonna check this coffin now. I found a strange stone inside this coffin. Hmm. You found the purification stone. So basically, whatever that weird voice is that's whispering throughout this place to us wanted us to find that. So we found it, and now we are going to venture down. Nice try. Weird, it says that there's something there to fight, but there's nothing there to fight. Going up. This is here. Got a red jewel. Doing pretty good on red jewels, honestly. I like it. So I gotta take this middle one here. And keep going down. Yeah, this is where Lance and Neil are. Uh, uh. So they're basically walking around like zombies right now. Eight enemies left. What? It's a strange fountain. Could there be a connection between this and the rock? Well, let's find out, shall we? He raises the purification stone. The stone began to glow, then disappeared into the spring. of the demon fountain have been purified. Oh, now there's people. Saved. Thank you. I was brought to this palace for free, Jen, changed to a demon. Willie speaks from his pocket. What? All the demons we saw before were human beings? Oops. I was actually a jerk in killing them. 
I now know what it feels like to be close to death. Death is terrifying. I wonder if the animals we eat feel the same way I felt right before death. Something to consider. And I say this as a hardcore carnivore. Hypocrite or not, it needs to be said. We were labor traders, arrested for the crime of buying and selling human beings. But the party officials sold us to a vampire. I can't believe it. Yeah, we'll believe it, Sparky. You had it coming. Treating people like cattle only to basically be used yourself as cattle. Perfect fit. Well, well. This is the result of being tempted by a beautiful woman. A nice guy asked me to follow him. So I followed him. I don't trust men. Okay, it's a lot of declarative statements there. The man sleeping in the coffin is surely a vampire. They're plotting something. Oh, jeez. There's a vampire sleeping in that coffin? And we just, you know, carousd up there. No big deal. A vampire couple lives in the coffins. They bring people here, turn them into demons, and use them for labor. Hmm. This place is connected to the land of Mew. The vampires are looking for something there. We were almost changed into demons. I'm afraid of what might have happened if you had come later. You would have been a demon, sir. And I would have killed you. Just how it works. I overheard the vampire saying something like the mystic statue can be found in Mew. Oh. I see what they're up to now. Crazy, crazy vampires. Here we go. I stole a key from the vampire woman. Here, take it. You received the key to the Seaside Palace. Well then, that was deserving of grandeur, I suppose. On the top floor of the palace is a passageway leading to Mew. I think that's where I came from, so I want to check this one real quick. Oh no, the other one was the one I came from. Oopsie, oopsie toodles. I don't know. I'm confused. Don't do this to me, game. You big old turd. What would we do now, deserted in the middle of the ocean? Maybe we could seize the palace and live there together. Huh. I guess. All our friends have vanished. Now we had, it just checked literally every point that they all came through. And... Like, nobody's there. Kara's not even in her spot. So it all seems kind of fishy. But here's that door they were talking about. And the bubble key. We had to use it. The key turns making a strange sound. The phantom land of Mew lies ahead. Sorry, it's quite a run here, so we're gonna make it. Passageway, I wonder if it goes clear to Mew. Yes, it does. Lily and I set foot on Mew. They will probably welcome us after waking from a thousand sleep from a sleep of thousands of years. So Mew is actually a thing that is supposed to exist as well, kind of like a lost civilization in the water, basically. Um, similar to the like theory of Atlantis and stuff like that, I guess, but um, in a different avenue of sorts.
wake this dude up and we're gonna punch him in the eyeball a few hundred times. Because he deserves it, because he's ugly. And stupid. His big ugly face is as dumb as a butt. So these guys stink, obviously, because not only do they like kind of go invincible, but if you don't do your, um, you know, your telekinesis ability and block their stones, they can do some significant damage. Um, shoot, it's already an hour thirty into this one. Uh, we're gonna call it here um, because going too much further is basically gonna start going into a whole other plot line. And that's going to be a lot of work to do in a short amount of time. So rather than try and rush through Mew in 30 minutes and make sure that you guys can still, you know, get through with this at a reasonable time, I'm going to call it here. And we'll pick this back up on Thursday where I will officially take us into the land of Mew and we will go after the vampires and our third mystic statue. So, I hope everyone's been having a good time. Like I said, I know I kind of seem like I'm kind of crapping on this game a little bit, but I really do enjoy it. It's genuinely entertaining and inventive and, you know, very well done. And the more I get into it, the more I kind of remember the magic that it brought to me when I was a kid. And I hope that some of you are getting that as well. So. If you are, I can't wait to see you guys on Thursday where we will continue this adventure. Um, for now, you guys have yourselves a good night. Make sure you get out there and vote. I'm going to chastise you pretty much all week for that. And also, crunch is wrong, so don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Have a good night, guys, and take care.